Good evening, Sarawak. It's 8 p.m. Friday, December 25th. This is DD Weekly. It's good to be with you. I'm Ling Pui. We are here to bring you a recap of the top news stories that made headlines across Sarawak for the week. One of the hottest topics these days is on the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine for COVID-19, as massive rollout has begun in parts of the United States and the UK this past week. As Malaysia has inked deal to secure the vaccine, Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg announced that Sarkins will get the vaccines for free, as the Sarawak government will foot the bill. Though the actual cost of the vaccines including transportation, storage and distribution remain uncertain, he assured that Sarawak government is prepared to absorb all costs for its people. In line with this, State Disaster Management Committee SDMC Chairman Dato Ahmad Douglas Uga Embas revealed that a task force will be set up to handle all affairs relating to the vaccine, especially the distribution and transportation once they are available. The team will be led by former State Health Directors Prof. Dato Dr. Andrew Kiyu and Dr. Jamila Hashim together with the current State Health Director, Dr. Chin Zingting and his team. Meanwhile, Banda Kuching MP Dr. Kelvin E is calling for greater transparency and accountability over the procurement of the COVID-19 vaccine and distribution plan under the newly formed Parliamentary Select Committee, PSC, on Health, Science and Innovation. To remove any doubts which could affect public confidence in this vaccine, he said it is pertinent that the PSC is properly briefed on the updates and progress of the procurement and distribution by the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. Although the issue of illegal immigrants in Sarawak is not new, the state government is looking into it seriously these days, following the detection of illegal immigrants being tested positive of COVID-19 in the state. To tackle this situation, State Disaster Management Committee is planning to launch Operation Jala very soon to reinforce efforts in holding up illegal immigrants and stopping them from entering Sarawak. Adding on, SDMC Chairman Dato Ahmad Douglas Uga Embas has also allowed companies to rehire foreign workers in hopes to reduce the cases of COVID-19 among illegal immigrants, considering that foreign workers who are officially employed in Sarawak will need to undergo COVID-19 tests before starting their jobs here. With less illegal immigrants, it would also be easier to tackle the source of COVID-19 among them and further reduce the number of positive cases. Also concerned for the health and safety of Sarawakians, Sarawak for Sarawakians S4S Movement and Sarawak People's Aspiration Party, Aspirasi, have voiced out a few suggestions of their own. While S4S spokesperson Tan Kok Chiang calls upon the state government to build border walls to block the giant tikus along Sarawak border, Aspirasi President Lina Su proposes for the deployment of drones to enhance border patrol surveillance. She said drone technology is capable to not only track illegal crossings in the act, but also help to save cost and time. Have you heard that low-income earners under the B40 group can now take up loan with Mutiara Mortgage and Credits Sandran Berhar to buy houses priced below 120,000 ringgit developed by the state government with the lowest interest rate at only 1%. Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg in announcing this highlighted that they can now buy affordable houses even without deposit by taking up a loan with the GPS government-owned financial facility. While expressing concern on squatter problems in the state, Abang Johari also stressed that a policy using new approaches to create more structured housing and villages development, including Village expansion were crucial for a conducive living environment and well-being of the people. These will include all basic infrastructure and facilities like utilities supply, 
roads and drainage which are to be borne by the government while the owners only have to pay for the cost of building the houses. Touching on Sarawak forestry, Chief Minister Datuk Patindia Bang Johari Tun Openg said cases of illegal logging have declined drastically as the state now has the technology such as special aircraft and drones to curb such activities. Not only that, Sarawak has also acquired a special plane equipped with modern technologies costing some 35 million ringgit that could detect minute activities on the ground. Meanwhile, Abang Johari also expressed disappointment with timber concessionaires for not doing enough for reforestation whereby replanting are only done in certain areas and this is not up to par. Therefore, he asserted that the GPS government's new policy would make it mandatory for timber concessionaires to carry out reforestation in their concession areas and this is possible now as Sarawak is no longer depending on the timber industry as it was back then. Additionally, the state government has also allocated 62 million ringgit under the 12 Malaysia plan for Forest Department Sarawak to implement forest restoration programs which can then reduce the state's reliability on logging activities. The program, which was launched since June 2019, has to date sees over 10 million trees comprising 50 species planted on 9,732 hectares of areas throughout Sarawak in over a year. Coming up next is more updates on Sarawak's politics. Parti Kadilan Rakyat PKR Sarawak Chief Larry Sung has made up his mind to maintain his position for a little while longer after his decision to resign a few days ago when he insisted that the party be led by a Dayak going into Sarawak's upcoming state election. This shocking news posted on his social media was followed by various responses from PKR State Leadership Council MPN Parti Bangsa Dayak Sarawak PBDS and other political observers. PKR Information Chief Abun Sui Angit said MPN's emergency meeting on the day of the resignation has reached an unanimous decision, wanting Sung to continue as the leader of the party until the next election. At the same time, he refuted Parti Pesa Kabumi Putra Persatu PBB Information Chief Dato Idris Buang's accusations that PKR was in crisis after Sun's announcement to step down from his title to give way to a Dayak leader which is for the party's best interest. Amid the heated discussion, PBDS President Bobby Willem extended his invitations to the Dayak members in PKR to join his party. To his interpretation, the implicit meaning behind Sung's resignation was to convey the message that PKR Sarawak is monopolized by the Dayak, so Bobby said it is better for the Dayak people to join and strengthen PBDS instead. Political observer Datuk Peter Minos also opined that this action of Sung's was because he foresaw a gloomy future of PKR in both the national level led by Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim and the state level. Confidence might have been lost among some of the PKR leaders including Sung, seeing that Anwar has yet to become the Prime Minister. Besides, he said it is not an easy task for Sung to lead a political party in Sarawak in which majority of the population is made up of Dayaks because he did not understand the hopes and aspirations of the Ivans, Birayus and Orang Ulu. For now, Sun's proposal for a Dayak to lead PKR into the election has not yielded any confirmation. 
Though PKR Sarawak's state leaders have given him their full confidence and support to remain and lead the party, there were no objections of his proposal to identify a suitable Dayak leader to lead. Coalition partners of PKR too have been informed and are willing to discuss this matter seriously in early January. On another political news, Sarawak People's Aspiration Party Aspiracy announces its decision to contest in all the seven urban seats in the central region in the upcoming Sarawak state election. Its Secretary General, Simon Tiong, said of the seven seats, five are in Cebu, namely Bukit Asik, Lawan, Nangka, Dudong and Bawangasan, while two others are in Serike, namely Repo and Murado. The names of their potential candidates will be revealed in due time. On the same day, Aspiracy President Lina Su said a request has been submitted to the Sarawak Chief Minister's Office for a copy of the Commercial Settlement Agreement signed with Petronas on December 7. Viewing that the CSA is a public document of national interest pertaining to Sarawak's oil and gas resources belonging to all Sarawakians, she said fine prints should be made known to the people as they have the rights to know the details of the deal. Now let's take a look at COVID-19 situation in the state. In the past seven days, there have been an increase of 12 new cases. With that, the cumulative number of COVID-19 cases in Sarawak now stands at 1,096. Kuching and Cebu are now COVID-19 yellow zones, while Syrian has turned to green zone with no new cases in the past 14 days. With the latest updates on Standard Operating Procedures SOPs, State Disaster Management Committee SDMC has allowed room-based karaoke in shopping malls to operate. However, SDMC Chairman Dato Ahmad Douglas Uga Ambas specified that this does not include KTVs, nightclubs, pubs and bistros. They are to remain closed until further notice. Also, to all Sarawakians out there, please be reminded that Christmas celebrations are only allowed to be organised today while observing strict SOPs. Those who intend to go to church must follow the SOPs and visiting is limited to close families with 20 people at any one time. Today marks the first Christmas Day celebrated with new norms. So here's a Christmas message from Chief Minister Dr. Patingye Abang Johari Tun Oping to all Sarawakians. He urged all Sarawakians to strengthen commitment in contribution to the harmony and progress of the state and not squander the opportunities and resources to build a bright future for Sarawak. Pointing out several of Sarawak's greatest achievements for the past one year despite the COVID-19 pandemic, such as the signing of the Commercial Settlement Agreement with Petronas and the imposement of 5% state sales tax on Sarawak's oil and gas products, among others, Abang Johari expressed high confidence that Sarawak is on track to achieve a developed and high income status by 2030. That is the DD Weekly News for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Ling Hui and on behalf of all members of Diet Daily, I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.